The North Woods of Maine, wild and lonely country, an emptiness that many find intoxicating. We are a long way from anywhere, <laughs> and I love it. But winter is changed up here. Over the last 25 years, snowmobiling exploded with thousands of miles of interconnected trails. At Pittston Farm, deep in the woods north of Rockwood, the local trail system is their lifeblood. If we don't groom the snowmobile trails and they're rough, we don't maintain them, we don't get any business coming in. So it's very crucial to us, the whole region in general. Guy Mills logs a lot of hours in the cab of his groomer. If we do the whole trail system, we do about 130 miles. It takes about 17 hours if, if we do them all. For all the effort put into maintaining the trails, there's a die-hard minority of sledders who want no part of them. You know, a lot of people enjoy trail riding, not so much on my select group. We enjoy the back country and getting out and see parts of Maine that not everybody can see. Brian Monahan rides with the Backcountry Maniacs, a group that seeks out off-trail thrills, cutting through fresh powder on customized high-powered machines. You know, up over mountains, up through the trees, there's no better thrill in life, I think. I drag race cars for eight and a half years, and I don't get as much adrenaline rush out of that as I did mountain climbing and off-trail riding. Up here, nobody really cares, as long as you're not running over new tree growth. We try to promote responsible backcountry riding. Walter Beasley acknowledges that off-trail backcountry riders have developed a bad boy image. We're kind of rebels in a way, and breaking the rules is one of my things, but, but don't break the law. Beasley founded a company in Maine that makes accessories for sledders, goggles, gloves, jackets, and the like. The name of his company? Judged. Judged is actually about backtrail guys kind of being judged. It's just kind of a fun name, and it just really fit the brand. Over on the other side of Moosehead Lake, quiet please, schools in session. We built our own schoolhouse and we've got it fully stocked with, uh, with all the materials we need the curriculum. West Branch Pond Camps in the unorganized territory of Township A, Range 12. Eric Sterling converted his father's old tanning shed into a schoolhouse for his two children, Avis and Oscar. Eric's wife, Mildred, a photographer, is teacher. It's an eclectic mix of Montessori and Waldorf. And I appreciate following the children's passions and encouraging them to learn other languages and learn about other cultures. And we do a lot with maps and social studies. The kids are following a long family tradition. My two brothers and I grew up right here at the camps. We were homeschooled right here. It was 30 miles to Greenville. No plowed road at the time. We loved it. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. Sterling went off to Bates College and became a teacher. But after a few years, he felt the pull of true north. He decided the wider world held nothing over life back in the woods, setting his mind to preserving this way of experiencing the wilderness that really hasn't changed over the last hundred years. Most places have really modernized. I mean, especially even in the wintertime, you know, it's easier just to get everything to the point where you can run water lines and have the toilets inside and all that. And we feel like it's important to give people an opportunity to step away from that. Meanwhile, there's work to do. A typical winter day can run 14 hours or more for Sterling. Luckily, he has a little help. Oscar steps right in and takes command of his vintage snowmobile, helping his father lay tracks for today's cross-country skiers. He really enjoys it. You can't get him off it. Once you put him on it, all he wants to do is go out and groom and set tracks. So snowmobiles are used only for utility at West Branch Pond Camps, transporting baggage lodge to lodge, grooming ski tracks as you saw there. Finally tonight, if you're not really into roughing it, how about living like a lumber baron?